Kia ora and welcome to the Becoming Podcast. I am your host Jamie Brown and we have Alex Newman with us today. Alex, hi, welcome. Thank you. Good to have you here. A quick shout out to the Hotel Boutique Leonardo for allowing us to do the shoot, to do the video here, so thank you very much. Alex, you've got a wonderful story to share with everybody, very in-depth, very, very much full of feeling and, and, and emotion. I don't think I can say much more. I'll leave it for you. Okay, well, I just thought that as I am promoting my work with, uh, with the menopause and the perimenopause, I thought it was only fitting, really, that um, I should share my own personal story. Mm. And um, just so that people are really aware of why and how I came to be so interested and, and passionate about helping other women with their hormonal health. Um, I'm going to try and keep it short, but it, it does last over a few years. So, um, so yeah, it kind of started really when I was working as the manager of drug and alcohol services in Bath and North East Somerset. Um, a lot of my job was very stressful, going to meetings, etc., etc., and I started to experience. I didn't know there were hot flushes at the time, but yeah. hot flushes. So I'd get into a meeting and I'd get incredibly hot and, you know, need windows open and stuff. And it's, it's actually really very uncomfortable um, trying to remember what you need to say and be present in a meeting when you're really, really hot. Um, I was also not sleeping very well, starting to get anxious, which is something that I've never been, always been a pretty confident person. Um, and just generally feeling pretty dreadful most of the time. Uh, waking up in the morning with just a sense of dread about trying to get through the day. Um, I had two teenagers at home mm -hmm. as well, um, and a house to run, and a relationship, and all the other things that you know most people have got going on in their lives. I was about 44, 45 at the time when these symptoms started to occur. I had absolutely no idea whatsoever that they were linked to the menopause or the peri perimenopause. Mm -hmm. In fact, I used to joke with the lady I used to share an office with that we were in the menopause, but actually not really even realising that we really were. So, um, so after a while of these symptoms just coming and going a lot of the time, I just put them down to my lifestyle stress, basically. Um, so my life was pretty, pretty hard at mm -hmm. the time. And at that point in time, my husband then was offered a job in New Zealand. Um, and I jumped at the chance because I'd been working at the same place and with drugs and alcohol for uh, coming up to 15 years. And I felt like I was pretty burnt out, to be honest. Um, so we decided to go. We went over to New Zealand, packed everything up, went over to New Zealand. And I, it was planned that I was going to take six months off work just to be able to de-stress mm -hmm. and... So I was very excited about that. Never had a six month break off work before. My children were grown up and I was, felt like I was gonna get some time to myself. One of the things that happened when we got to New Zealand was I had to find a new GP. So I went along to the local medical center, mm -hmm. um, spoke to the GP. One of the things she asked me about was obviously what medication I was on. I told her that I was on the contraceptive pill. She told me that I was way too old to be taking the pill. It was far too dangerous and I need to stop taking it straight away. Little did I know that that contraceptive pill was giving me a t small amount of hormone, which was basically keeping me just about ticking over with my hormonal health. As soon as I stopped taking the contraceptive pill, I had a huge hormonal crash. I didn't know that's what it was at the time, but my symptoms came on so fast it was it was frightening i experienced um intense itching all over my body burning um, my hair started falling out um, i felt very anxious and depressed i couldn't sleep some nights i'd be awake all night mm -hmm. literally all night um, i was getting tingling in my fingers and my toes again i was getting um the hot flashes, but then I was starting to get really serious night sweats. Sometimes I would wake up so completely bathed in sweat, and sometimes that would happen yeah. twice in a night. Um, I was, I just didn't know what was happening to me. I was, I was scared actually. Yeah. I was really fearful. I thought that there was something very, very wrong with me. Um, I was in a new country with no support, no friends, no family. Um, felt very, very isolated. Mm -hmm. um, and so kept going back to see my GP, who was a woman. She was in herself in her early 40s. 
Um, I didn't only see her, I saw other GPs in the practice, but um, at no point did I even think that it was anything to do with my hormones or perimenopause. Right. Um, I had blood test after blood test after blood test. I started taking vitamins, anything that I could do, nothing was changing, nothing was getting better. Um, and then I started to just to have really hideously heavy periods mm. to the point where I couldn't leave the house. Um, at that point, I just had enough. I really had enough and I was very, very stressed. Mm. Um, I was finding it difficult to go to work. Uh, luckily, I was working from home a lot of the time, so I was didn't actually have to get up and get dressed and drive and go to the office. Sometimes I did. Yeah. I had a lot of driving in my job, so... Um, that was quite difficult. And then um, one day I went to see the, the nurse and I said, you've got to put me back on the pill because it's the only thing that I think is going to help. And at that point she said, actually, I don't know what to do with you anymore. I, I, I really don't understand what's going on. I'm right. going to send you to see an endocrine doctor. An endocrine doctor is somebody who obviously deals with... Um, Hormones, mainly infertility in women. So women who can't get pregnant or, or having problems um, holding on to pregnancies, etc. Yeah. I went to see her. She listened to me. She sent me for a scan and came back that I had a condition called adenomyosis. <laughs> I always find it a struggle to say that word. Yeah. Which is where your womb lining basically just builds up and builds up and builds up. Um, that was one of the reasons why I was having such heavy periods but mm. she didn't want to give me any hormones until I'd had that situation sorted out so then I had to go into hospital and had to have um, what's commonly known as a DNC so basically I had to have mm -hmm. my wounds scraped out and um, they told me that they had to give me a, they were going to give me a Mirena coil which would have a small amount of progesterone which is one of the um, one of the hormones that we are lacking when we yeah. go into perimenopause, and that would give me a slow release. Literally within a week of me having that, I started to feel like I was coming back to life again. Um, I started sleeping, I just didn't feel so anxious, etc, etc. Luckily, that was just before COVID hit, <laughs> because had, it, had that not happened before COVID, I yeah. dread to think how I would have coped yeah. actually yeah. with COVID. And, so there were so many people that didn't get the healthcare that they needed over that period in time. Yes. So I was incredibly lucky. Um, so yeah, so I, I kind of, once I discovered that this was what had been wrong with me all the time, was that once they'd taken me off the pill, mm -hmm. my hormones had just fallen through the floor. And then I'd spent two years, basically, in, in decline. Yeah. And it was just getting worse and worse every month. Um, obviously when I had the Mirena coil put in I started to get the slow release progesterone and I started to feel better, started to climb back up the mountain but nobody even mentioned to me that I actually needed oestrogen as well, nobody even talked to me about that right. so I just started to research everything myself and it was only through my own re research did I actually really understand everything that there is to know about the perimenopause and the menopause yeah. by the time I moved here um, I realised that I should be taking oestrogen as well. And one of the things that I will say I'm incredibly happy about is that you can buy um, HRT, mm -hmm. which oestrogen, progesterone, testosterone, over the counter in, in Mallorca, in yeah. Spain. Yeah. So I took myself off down to the chemist, bought myself some oestrogen and, and started using that as well. And all I can say is things just got better and better and better. And I felt 100 million percent better than I had done probably in about five years. Yes, yeah, yeah. And one of the only things that I'm incredibly frustrated about is I just felt incredibly let down by the medical profession in general, not personally, but just in the fact that there was, that knowledge is not there for women, women yeah. aren't understood, and um, you know, I shouldn't have had to suffer no. like I did, no. and no needlessly really and mm. I shouldn't have really had to be the one who had to kind of self-diagnose myself with the menopause sure yeah. Um, yeah I mean one of those conditions that you talked about uh, is, a, is 
bad enough for people, but you had like a dozen at the same time coming in and, and just bombarding you, bombarding your whole body with all these thoughts, feelings, emotions going exactly. on inside you. And I think that a lot of women do not recognize that some of these symptoms are down to that. They think it's just because they're getting older or because mm-hmm. they're stressed. And it doesn't have to be that way. You know, mm-hmm. HRT literally saved my life. And that is, I'm, I mean, I'm not being dramatic saying that. I mean, I really did not feel like my, what my life was worth living at the time sure. because I was just felt so ill yeah. and so depressed. I just didn't find joy in anything. I didn't want to mix socially with anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't really want to go out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that it was just the total opposite of the type of person that I normally am. So the fact that I know who I was and who I became without the hormones that I needed has made me a million percent more passionate about making sure that women really do understand it's not them it is just a steady decline in their hormones and it's happening to everyone i mean and some women experience it even earlier than their their 40s you know some some women can be experiencing it in their 30s even in their 20s early menopause happens to some women before they've even had children for example um and i just do think that the more that women understand about hormone health the more that they can understand their own symptoms and the earlier they can get the support that they need. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's, it really is important and uh, it, we're going to come back to this in a moment but uh, there's so much to, to, to follow up on this and, and where women can go and what they can do. So listen, you know, we're just going to take a, a quick commercial break uh, and then we'll be back with um, more of what Alex has got to share in a moment. Should I be selling right now? I gotta get a bigger place. What's my house worth? What do you think? Ooh. What's my house really worth? Do we need to renovate? <laughs> oh, sorry, that's pretty bad. How do I buy a house? What if I don't have time to see it in person? What is going on with this housing market? Don't worry. I can take the guesswork out of it. Hi, welcome back. We have Alex Newman with us sharing her story. If you've uh, seen the first half there, you've heard the information that she is sharing and we were talking just off air there about how the uh, information is just not there and why. Um, And I think Alex, now you want to talk on HRT and and a bit more on your story. Mm. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that I am also very excited about in some ways is the fact that HRT can really help women suffering um, and I am one of them you know uh, I feel as though I'm living life again and I'm you mm-hmm. know able to work and, and, and carry on with life I've got my energy back etc and I know that that wouldn't have been possible without be, um, being on HRT so for those who don't really understand what the term HRT means is that it's basically hormone replacement therapy. Mm. So as women age, basically our hormones decline. And all that HRT does is basically filling up our hormone bank again, really, and just uh, taking us back up to a level where we can function. Um, And being able to function as women is very important, you know, because we've, we've got so much to be getting on with, you know, Um, and lots and lots of women that I know of in the past have ended up having to leave their jobs, they've left their marriages, they've not been able to cope with their caring responsibilities, you know, some women have just upped and left and gone, you know, just had to leave everything because they just cannot cope with with anything that's happening in their lives due to their lack of hormonal health. Um, So HRT is out there, it's available, it's really simple to understand and to take. I know that there is quite a lot of fear behind it, which um, is, you know, you should not be, not be scared of HRT in any way. Um, obviously everyone is different and it's a huge personal choice what anyone decides to take. Um, but I'm a great advocate for HRT. Um, I obviously have progesterone in my Mirena coil that is on a slow release. I use oestrogen in a gel form, which is just transdermal, which means that it just soaks into the skin. 
means that it bypasses the liver, so there's no problems with that. And I also use a small amount of testosterone in the same way, mm-hmm. transdermally, that goes through the skin. So basically, I have just gradually built my, my hormone levels up, and I feel like I'm just about on a really nice, even keel with everything now. Um, and yeah, and I'm feeling pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just like to give other women the confidence, really, to be able to know that you can basically be diagnosed with perimenopausal symptoms just by your symptoms. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't need to go and have a blood test because blood tests in in most most um, places, you know, don't actually really recognise your hormones as a pattern because your hormones are so different on any one day. Every day, a woman's hormones will be different. So I know that people say, oh, you've got to have a blood test, and and that's how a lot of the medical profession do diagnose HRT. But a lot of women say they go to see their GPs, they have a blood test, and they say, oh, no, it's fine today. And so, well, it might have been fine today, but, you know, I'm still feeling like this. Um, So they're fighting to get get the treatment that they need. and as I've said before, um, I'm trained by Dr. Louise Newsom. She is the leading GP specialist of the menopause in the UK and now globally. I just heard a podcast that she's done, I think, in Australia the other day. So, you know, she's 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 getting out there yes. um, and she's fantastic. I mean, and I urge anyone that, you know, to read her books, etc. Um, I'm going to be doing a podcast with her um, in next year sometime so um, again that's going to be excellent just to be able to um, spread the word even further um, and yeah and I just really encourage women to either get in touch with me or to read the books or to go mm-hmm. online and just to do your own research educate yourselves and make sure that you're not suffering needlessly sure. with hormone deficiency because sure. it is a very simple thing to rectify as long as you know what you need yeah. And what was her name again, please? Her name is Dr. Louise Newson. Louise Newson. 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 Right. Okay. N E W S O N. That's right. Newsom. And she's opened up the first okay. um, menopause clinic in the UK, mm-hmm. and uh, she's she's just very incredibly passionate, just yeah. as passionate as I am, more yeah. passionate than me, um, about spreading the word and really making sure that women have, yeah. get what they need. Yeah, so fantastic. So if you can't get hold of the doctor, certainly get hold of Alex and, and she'll help you in, in a lot of different areas. When you were going through, you're having the HRT um, uh, therapy or treatment at the moment, how long is that expected to last for? Is there a time limit to a certain, I mean, everyone's different, you can't say, okay, by 60, it's not going to happen at 65, but... Um, is it expected a, a length of time for this to be to be on this? I expect to take HRT for the rest of my life. The rest of your life, okay. And the reason for that being is that there are, it's been proven to help women with um, bone health, mm-hmm. with dementia, mm-hmm. with cardiovascular health. Basically, everything that goes on in your body, the hormones are needed to support those functions. Yes. Um, and there's lots and lots of studies being done now. All of them are very, very positive in, yeah. and leading to women's health overall being massively improved by H- using HRT. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 fantastic. And the more the people are aware of this, the more they can share it in a general conversation rather than being a hush-hush conversation that you're only sharing amongst women in a small circle exactly i mean it's, i don't and i don't understand why it is still a kind of slightly taboo subject people are embarrassed to talk about it you yeah. know or it's been joked about yes oh well yeah. you know she's having a hot flush or she's menopausal yeah. almost as though it's it's something very derogatory it's not it's no. just you know it's something that we're it's just a natural stage in, in life just like lots of other things sure. so um yeah it's I think that the more we talk about it, the less taboo it will be, and the more understanding there is, the more people will come forward for treatment, and yeah. and yeah, we will all be a lot healthier and happier. Definitely. And how has that affect? How has that affected besides yourself, um, but your family and perhaps other people you work with with their family? How has that affect being on them pre and then maybe going under HRT and you know those stages? Well, again, like I've said before, you know, I think relationships really mm-hmm. are put under a lot of pressure because all of a sudden you have, you know, this 
this person in your household who is not functioning in sure. the way that they always have done. Um, and obviously there's lots of irritation and, mm. and anger and sleeplessness, you know, yes. which makes the woman certainly made me feel like I just wanted to crawl into a hole, basically. Sure. You know, I didn't like the person that I was because I wasn't able to really mm. cope or function with what I used to be able to because I just felt very overwhelmed by, by the things that I that were going on in my life, yeah. my job, my family, my responsibilities. Um, and yeah, all I wanted to do was to basically just get away from everybody and everything. Yeah. Yes, yes, go and hide, hide yeah, under hide exactly. the blankets yeah. as it were. Yeah. yeah, because that information wasn't readily available for whatever reason. Um, well, a lot of women literally do think that they're losing their minds, you sure. know. I mean, it, it does feel like that. I mean, the mental health of women seriously deteriorates along with the physical. I mean, the physical is bad enough, but yes. the mental health side of things is really frightening. I mean, the, the suicide rates of women in between 45 and, and, and 55 are the biggest of four women, you know, right. because they're in that, in that age group right. where they don't right. really understand that the hormonal changes are happening and the decline in their mental health because of it. Sure. I mean, they're totally extreme. And I never really thought of that, how extreme those situations are where they feel they have nowhere else to, to turn to or nowhere else to go. And that they have to 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 um, revert to that sort of extreme, yeah. you know, action. And the sad thing is, as well, is that women, you know, are dropping out of the workforce, and especially a woman around my type of age. It's exactly what happened to me. Yeah. You know, I mean, luckily I was moving countries anyway, but I just got to a point where I just didn't feel as though I could. I mean, I was a regional manager working for Booper in New Zealand, and mm. I was, you know, I loved my job. I was good at my job, but. I just felt really as though I couldn't carry on doing it. So a lot of yeah. women who get to those kind of top management jobs, CEOs, people like that, they have to. They feel like they have to drop out because sure. they just don't feel like their their kind of physical and mental health yeah. allows them to continue the responsibility they have in those top jobs, which yeah. again is is criminal, really. Yeah, no, it is, and it's at such a stage in their lives and in their careers when they're becoming, and we're talking about the indigenous. Um, peoples and talking about the shamanic side of becoming the wise woman, the sage. There's so much information if they drop out of the family um, sphere, the, the work situation that is lost. It's like a, a whole encyclopedia lost mm. when that one drops out or does something drastic to themselves. Absolutely. When they have so much information, love and, and knowledge to share with the, with the world, with their families, with you know everyone around them. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And with the, the, the health effects afterwards, I mean, how have you felt afterwards? Have you, is there a noticeable, I mean, obviously you're on the HRT, but what about physically, um, you know, with exercise or with the mental yeah. side? How I mean, that? obviously, holistically, we should all look at our diets and mm -hmm. look at our, you know, exercise and our, just, I mean, the great thing to do is just to look at, at your life as a whole, you know, yeah. and try to make some more informed decisions going forward about your physical and mental health. It's not just about hormones, obviously, no. it's about so many other things, as we all know. And as a therapist, you know, one of the things that is great about me you know, being able to bring all of these things together is that once I can get somebody um, really stable on their hormones, then you can address the other things that are going on in their right, life, you sure. know, and then try to sort that out. Because while somebody's hormones are all over the yeah, place, yeah, there's yeah. no point in taking the lid off Pandora's box about their marriage or family issues or their sure. childhood problems or, you know, anything like that. I mean, yes. and I would actually discourage that because all that is going to do yes, is to yes. make somebody feel yeah. worse. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, and you mentioned before, I mean, part of the symptoms as well, and it could be one or two or a mixture of all of them. There, one of them was brain fog, mm. you know, and, and it seems to be a topic that's coming up all the time. Well, the old saying used to be spaghetti head, you know, we had all these thoughts going around, you couldn't make sense of it. Or, like we all go through, sometimes we forget what we're saying. Mm. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Bit, so, you know, these symptoms are there and I think it's important to the people that are listening to this, male or female, you know, you're in a relationship, you're in a, in a situation where there is help available and there is someone to come and talk to about this. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, memory loss for me, 
I've always had an incredibly good memory. Right. And it's the most one of the most frustrating things for me yeah. is that sometimes I just cannot find my words. Yeah. You know, they're in there, but they just will not come out. Sure. And it's just, and even though everything else is going really, really well, I can still be sat here talking to you and still just yes. cannot think of a word. Yeah. It's very frustrating. I mean, there is a there's a huge list of like at least forty symptoms on the list of perimenopausal symptoms. Yep. Um, for me, I could literally tick off every single one. Yep. I think I had a particularly bad time. Sure. So it, this, what happened to me, doesn't won't happen to everyone, mm -hmm. but I just want people to listen to my story and yes. recognize maybe parts of it, yep. um, or even just look at the list of symptoms online. If you do feel that you're experiencing any of that, please feel free to get in contact, to uh, come and talk to me yes. and uh, I can yeah. hopefully point you in the right direction. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Thank you. Um, thank you for sharing this because there's definitely a need, a total need for this and, and uh, a lot of us don't understand or haven't understood or realised the situations that's going on in our families and it's a broader family, it's also our friends of, of, of the family in that as well and we need to... We need to address these issues and, and with Alex sharing this wonderful story and the, and the, it's like hell on earth, you know, the, the symptoms, the things that you went through, but you've come to the stage and where you are now, which is wonderful. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think I described it when I first got in touch with Dr. Louise Newsom as a living hell, you know, yes. and that's really sounds very dramatic, but that's actually how it felt. But sure. I'd like to just end on a really positive because yeah, everything's yeah, great yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in lovely sunny New York talking yes, to you and yeah. everything's going well. And, but I will say to you that there is no way that I would be sat here now if it wasn't for the fact yeah. that I had done the research, done the work, found H HRT and yeah. I've been now been stable on HRT for three years. Yeah, fantastic. Well done. Well done. Thanks. So please listen, you know, share the story, share this video, get the message out there. And, and, and it's just a, an amazing story, it's amazing how Alex has come through it and been lucky enough to do that. And there's a lot out there that, that wouldn't have, you know, having these troubles. So please share this and, uh, and get this information out there. You know, I'm sort of looking for the right words, but it's just a, such a, a depth, uh, in-depth feeling, in-depth story about what's going on with so many women out there at the moment in, the, in this world that's changing. Um, rapidly so yeah thank you thank you very much for coming in that's Pleasure, wonderful thank you. Um, so yeah please like subscribe share a big thank you to Hotel Boutique Leonardo uh, for letting us use your rooms and thank you for for watching and sharing in the story and look forward to catching up with you soon